Hello, class. Hi, teacher. Can you hear me good? Hi, good night. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. How is everything going? All good. It actually is cold here. It's not raining, but it's very cold. But it's cold or is but like cold? Like, do you have a sweater? Not that much, but almost. Okay, so it's cool. Oh, cool. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Yes. Hi, teacher. Hello. Hi. I was trying yesterday to complete all my tasks, and I was um, also completing the uh, need term, but I got the ones that you need to write and fulfill with words. No, they are not going any further. Uh, I don't know if I was trying writing the word in capital letter, comma. Well, you, you know, sometimes, sometimes the platform doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. I'm frustrated because <laughs> uh, the, let me, what is it? Let me just look for it. Okay. The midterm, I just got like around 75 percent i guess and, and also i double check and review every video every class mm -hmm. mm, and i'm pretty sure but because he's asking the three words that uh, based for the i don't remember let me, let me open it right now just give me one moment Okay. It's one que two questions. The ones the, the number one and the number two. Uh, when it says uh, mention the two type of listening question we have gone over in this course, and I just wrote guest and detailed. I don't know. I, I also try it with lowercase, adding and taking off the period at the end. It, it's incorrect. Okay. Uh, maybe guess purpose. We'll see. What we'll, we'll see that right now. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's in the midterm. Okay. It's, we'll mm. see it. And the second one also type in in the three words which are using inference questions, and I wrote them imply, infer, suggest. Mm -hmm. Also, I tried separate uh, them with a comma, adding a period, lowercase. I don't. Know. I just. <laughs> I just yeah uh, you know sometimes uh, the platform doesn't work that's the uh, ah, okay and sometimes... the same issue happens with number nine so okay. those are the ones that are... mm -hmm. okay. okay hello Rodrigo Antonio Melendez <laughs> the ghost that's going to be your nickname the ghost <laughs> someday Rodrigo Antonio Melendez what do you do are you in, are you working? Are you driving? Someday when you have the chance, please chat. Do you work in <laughs> Wait, wait. Where do you work? All right. Jose Isaias, how are you? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I'm pretty I'm, good, and you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. Hold on. Let me see one thing.
you know what i think now that it's raining i have to call i have to call um i have to call claro because my internet is, is um it's very bad recently Teacher, I have a problem with the connection on my internet. Okay, Lisa. Okay, let me open the portal now. I think Rodrigo, Rodrigo, do you work in Insaforp? <laughs> <laughs> and and maybe you are checking the class. Tell me if you see my screen, please. Hold on. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I believe I believe we did this yesterday, the detailed question. Yes, we did, I think. Yes, we did this. Mm -hmm. We did this too. But yes or no, the listening is, is easier than the reading. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it has challenges too. It is. It, it is challenging. Mm hmm Okay, here's where we stopped. Oh man, there's a lot of listenings here. Okay, so let's practice the listening. Remember, what is one thing that you should do? It's not an obligation, but what is one thing that you should do? Let's read the instructions. Listen to part of the lecture in a business study class. What is the lecture mainly about? Oh, okay, so we know we know one thing. We know that the audio is going to be about business, business studies. And we have to know what the lecture is mainly about. It's mainly about a um, method for evaluating outcomes, a technique for avoiding controversy, a comparison of beneficial inputs, formula for sidestepping failure. Do you understand a method of evaluating outcomes? Do you know what is outcome? Do you know what the outcome is? Oh, okay, uh, let me see. Let me give an example. If you mix red and white, what is the outcome? Like a result. Yes. So uh, outcome is the result. Yes, the outcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, letter B, technique for avoiding controversy. That you understand, right? Do you understand avoiding? Yes, teacher. 
Okay, C, a comparison of beneficial inputs. Do you know what is an input? Nope. Oh. Okay, an input is something, um, for example, when you, your company has an idea and you're talking about the idea, but then you have a suggestion, so you do an input. You are part of, you're giving an extra idea. Like a advice? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're you're taking you're okay. participating with your opinion. You're giving an input. Okay, okay so okay, so let's do the um let's do the reading. Uh, I'm sorry, the um can you hear? No, we, we can't. Okay, okay. Hold on. In a business study, listen to part of a lecture in a now business can, right? studies class. Yes. Okay, so we've outlined a number of techniques for effective decision making. Uh, now let's focus on one approach to figuring out how to uh, make good business decisions. Okay, so. Uh, one way of deciding whether to go ahead with some new investment project is to perform what's known as CBA, or cost-benefit analysis. CBA can estimate and total up the money values of both the benefits and costs to a community, institution, or business to establish whether an investment choice is worthwhile. So let's assume you've generated solutions to a business problem and have thought really carefully about which way to go. You think you have the best solution available, but before going ahead with any investment decision, what you need to do is add up the value of the benefits as well as the costs of this action. Now, uh, what I mean by costs and benefits here is always it's, it's always expressed in monetary terms. So, um, we find out what the cost is in money terms and also what the benefits might be, also in money terms. Uh, then, we subtract the costs from the benefits and we can choose whether to go ahead or not. All right, in simple terms, costs tend to be what we spend on something, um, say for example, a new piece of machinery. And, uh, and benefits are uh, what advantages, expressed in money units, we get over the lifetime of that machinery because of having purchased it as opposed to, well, <laughs> not having it or having some alternative. Um, in, in such a case, we can figure out a fairly simple CBA just by looking at expenses and uh, then subtracting them from the savings brought about by uh, improved, uh, the improvements of introducing the machinery. That would include things like the savings met by not having to pay salaries to employees who previously did the work of the machine. We could add the fact that the machines make fewer mistakes, <laughs> we hope, than human employees so there will be fewer rejected products. But on the other hand, we have to factor in the cost of running the machines, uh, such as maybe the increased electricity bill, the cost of repairs, and of course, the cost of training someone to operate the new equipment. So that much is pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. Cost-benefit analysis really only works if we are careful to add in all the costs and benefits. Uh, costs, especially, are sometimes hidden. For example, in, in paying for this new stuff, we're taking liquid money 
and spending it, right? So we're no longer paid interest from having that money in a bank or otherwise invested. Okay, so we have to subtract that loss from the benefit side. Then suppose also that the new machines are noisy. That means soundproofing, that's a cost. Or, or will it take up more space than the replaced workers and therefore require an addition to the building? These are less obvious costs, but they should be factored in to get an accurate picture. When we do CBA in a more public domain, uh, say on the building of a new road, the calculations can become even more tricky. Although there's some impressive software nowadays that helps us out, of course. So, how do we measure the benefits here? Does the road improve or worsen people's lives? A new road may, for example, uh, damage some wildlife habitat, or some residential community may be inconvenienced by the noise or air pollution. On the other hand, the new road could improve property values by decreasing commuting times. Um, it could also save human lives since it's safer than the old road. In practice, CBA tries to put a value on all these things, although a lot of people may not like what it says. What it does is try to find out how people really value these apparently subjective things by looking at the financial choices they're prepared to make to gain a benefit or to avoid something on the cost side. In this way, we can put a monetary figure on all benefits and costs. Of course, these calculations can be complex and sometimes controversial, but I want to point out that CBA is a powerful tool and perhaps the most rational way of choosing whether to go ahead with a complex investment decision. I think you're mute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't mute. I had my mic in mute. Okay. So what was the um, lecture mainly about? She was talking about the method. And she was talking about cost. Maybe the first one. Method for evaluating outcomes. Okay. Can you can you give me one second? Please hold on. I'm going to change my, my microphone. Please hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, so um, once again, what is the lecture mainly about? Can you hear me? Can you hear me good? Yes, teacher. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, so what is the um, the lecture mainly about? I was saying there is a method for evaluating outcomes. It's very general. Okay, good. Does anyone have anything different?
No, it's okay. Okay, number two. Why does the professor mention the introduction of machinery? Letter B. Letter B. You think it's B? Maybe. Okay, no problem. Let's 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 do this uh listening now. Why does the professor say this? Let's Oh, man. Click on the arrow. Ah, okay. it. So mm. it opened it, yeah. So yeah, okay. It's pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. To 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 load it. Okay, hold on. Let me repeat that for you. So that much is pretty straightforward, but we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. Letter A, some costs. A, letter A. You think it's A? She thinks some costs are difficult to see? Yes. Letter D. You think it's D? Why? Because. She's talking about cost. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's A or D? Put the audio again, please. Sure. So that much is pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. things cost so okay she thinks some costs are difficult to see whoever said hey i yes, don't i am because they says there are no tangible some of them are not tangible yeah but it's saying she thinks so but here she's speaking very positive like here she's stating she's not giving an opinion let's see one more time so that much is pretty straightforward. See, that much is pretty straightforward. So that means it's clear. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs. and. But also let's think different. So she thinks some costs are difficult to see. She wants students to understand the loss of money. She does not think the analysis is complicated. She does not think all benefits are really benefits. Is there okay. that an, another question well, I, that is letter B? Okay. I will put A because you are the only person participating and talking. <laughs> and I thank you for that. But I say D. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's why I was, I was in the, thank you. I'm sorry, too. Thank you. And I, that's why I was in the dilemma for A and D. I don't uh, know if it's the mistaken platform but when i made it i needed to hear it like three times because at the beginning i also thought it was letter a but at the end of the result the one that the platform yes. shows us correct is d you know why you know why i think is d because um david samuel you have a you have a point she does mention this but i don't like that she says she thinks and when she was speaking, it didn't sound like I, in my opinion, she wasn't speaking like that. She was, in fact, yeah. she said straightforward. So mm -hmm. she said she was 
implementing, que era un hecho. <laughs> you know? So But that's not... C is, is always think. She does not think. <laughs> Because it's, it, she is speaking, is the thinking of, of the lady. But maybe it is... She's providing it, it, a statement. I, I heard it in that. Yes. Right? yes. Okay. Making an affirmation, yes. At the beginning, the first time I made it, mm, I was crying because of my <laughs> <laughs> my grave <laughs> there. <laughs> and I went, my God, when I when I will do this stuff, I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> in this situation. In real mm -hmm. life happens. Or she does okay. not think. Okay, so. Let's put letter D. Yes. She does not think dialysis is complicated. Okay. I Let's leave it at <laughs> I mean, they're both they're both so correct. I can't get okay la moneda, man. And, and, and the, the, the thing is that how do you know if this is not an issue with the with the platform? Just imagine mm -hmm. it's letter E, A, and and because the platform platform has a mistake and we it's need true. To... <laughs> That's true. You got a point. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a difficult thing here. <laughs> oh my god. So let's do this. One. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Why does the professor say this? And why do I have to hate downloading this? When we do CBA in a more public domain, uh, say on the building of a new road, the calculations can become even more tricky. Although there's some impressive software nowadays that helps us out, of course. Why does the professor say this? Say on the building of a new road. When we do CBA in a more public domain, uh, say on the building of a new road, the calculations can become even more tricky. Although there's some impressive software nowadays that helps us out, of course. Why does the professor say this? Say on the building of a new road. Do you understand that expression, say? Creo que la usé hace poco. No, when you say say, it's like when you give an example. Ah, like, okay. like, like today, when I asked you, do you know what, uh, do you know what uh, outcome is? Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, let's say... Mm -hmm. And you know, say is to it's like saying digamos. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so in this case, she said, let's say on the side of the road. She was giving an example. So but he's talking about how tricky is to apply CBA. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is CBA. I think it's a medical it's the cause benefits of and the letter. I don't remember the A, the letter A. Analysis, maybe. Analysis, yes. Plus benefits well, analysis, okay. Yeah, so it says, listen again to the part of the lecture, then answer the questions. Why does the professor say this? To verify how tricky it is to apply CBA to a transportation business. Let's listen to it again. When we do CBA in a more public domain. In a public domain. Uh, say on the building of a new road. For example, in the building of a new road. The calculations can become even more tricky. Although there's some impressive software nowadays that helps us out, of course. So what I understand is like, so when we do the CBA in a different, like, in a public domain, yes, let's say transportation. transportation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but remember, she wasn't really talking about transportation business. She said transportation business as an example, but not transportation business, trans transportation business sign. So it says, she said that to verify how tricky it is to apply CBA to a transportation business, to introduce impressive software to building roads, to show how to calculate the building of a new road, to give an example of an analysis done in public domain. Maybe. Maybe because it's the what she's talking about. Uh, I think it's letter B to introduce impressive software for building roads. Me too. I I think it's B or D because 
she mentioned software only at the end though. But yeah, at yeah, the end, at the mentioned. end, that was, at the end, that was her statement. You know, it's just uh, software is good. She said that it's an impressive software, but the software is not for building roads. Exactly. So the software is for business. But what was about Ana Claudia? Hmm? She said she said the software was impressive. Yes. But, yes. but the CBA was on public domain. Mm -hmm. So but, definitely uh, but it's not talking big. about the, the, the trumps, the, the tricky about applying CBA. That is what talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's A, right? Okay. Yeah. Hey. Hey, good, man. Yeah. Yeah. To verify how tricky it is to apply CBA to a transportation business. Transportation but, business, but the example then, uh, she said another example of a building, a building. I don't know why, but <laughs> something of a building. But we, if we are uh, working with a, a public domain, we have a less control, I think. But really, I think it's D. In my personal opinion, I think it's D. Why? <clears throat> because yes, to verify how tricky or how tricky or let's say how difficult maybe, it is maybe, to apply maybe, CBA maybe. to a transportation business. But here is being a specific transportation business. And she said uh, public domains, let's say, so she used transportation business as an example. Right. But according to the platform, the letter A is the good one. Really? That's what the yes, platform said? I, I told you last night I spent oh, like man. an hour and a half making all of this. <laughs> and there are a lot of audios. <laughs> oh, yes. They are too long. But just uh, when you arrive, when you get to the uh, military, hmm? No. <laughs> so it was A according to the platform? Yeah. Hey, according to the platform. To verify how tricky it's the issue it is that we don't know it. if the platform is incorrect or what. Yes, you know what? I, I will ask about this mm -hmm. when we have our meeting because hmm, I will ask them to give me the book where they got the reading from. Oh, okay. Don't worry, then I'll check right there because now, now I am angry. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now it says, according to the professor, how does CB8 evaluate subjective things? Let's do one thing. See, maybe. But I need but to see the other sound. The, the other. No, wait. What is CB8 in management? Yeah. You know. In business, CBA in business. She said cost, benefits, I don't know what. Cost, benefits, and uh, um, analysis. analysis. Yes. As you say, analysis. So, according to the professor, how does the cost, benefit, and analysis evaluate subjective things? By asking people what, uh, what something is worth? Oh. I so guess that answer. belongs to the other exactly to yeah. that one. I think yeah. letter C. You need to subscribe. We haven't we way. haven't even heard this. <laughs> there are two together. That is a mistake. Yes, but too. but the, the, all all of them are are the main. Yes. The main no, but they are different. Conversation between a student and a professor. Hi, Dr. Johnson. I came by to discuss my research paper. I dropped it by on Monday. Uh, about the nutritional value of chocolate? Oh, yes. Okay, hold on. Let's see. The this is the next, the next questions. Mm. No, no, no. The, the, the... But it the has the part. university address of a professor. Okay. Isn't it okay to use sites with the .edu domain in the address? Hmm. The next part of the six. I remember next. that that question has to do with the. Uh, this is the. the oh, the, the previous the, one. Yes. Oh, so but number it's five. It's letter C. Okay, so number five has to do with, with the CBA audio, right? 
Ay, ay, qué es. Es, es, es. es. Uh -huh. When she yes. was talking about the machinary cost, she says what is uh -huh. uh, the cost of the buying machine and the space that machine use and all of these things. And it's implying that you need to subtract costs from the benefits. It's true. Asking experts for their opinion by asking people what something is worth by studying how people use money. Not because it's for business. Mm -hmm. It's not another really beef because it's for business. Mm. <laughs> okay, so let's do that one. Okay, so now these two readings are for this, are right? For chocolate. And I want one chocolate. What is your favorite chocolate? Listen to a conversation between a student. Dark. I love dark. I, I, I like the Hershey's dark chocolate. Yes. It's good. But I hate white chocolate. That's not chocolate. <laughs> Me either. I don't like it. It's nasty, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear this one. So listen again to part of the conversation and answer the questions. Where does the professor say this? And a professor. Hi, Dr. Johnson. I came by to discuss my research paper. I dropped it by on Monday. Uh, about the nutritional value of chocolate? Oh, yes, Lisa, that's right. Have you had a chance to look at it yet? Yeah, I sure have. Uh, let me dig it out of my files. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Well, Lisa, you've done a fine job of citing your sources and writing up your reference page. But you used a lot of internet resources for your information. That's right. Uh, you said we could, didn't you? Oh, yeah, but I also said to be sure to evaluate the site to make sure that it's worthwhile before you used it. This one here that I've circled, I don't think this is what I'd call a good source. But it has the university address of a professor. Isn't it okay to use sites with the .edu domain in the address? Well, you have to look beyond just the address. Yes, you are correct that this site is that of a professor, a professor at a very prestigious university, in fact. But did you notice this particular set of web pages were student papers that the professor had uploaded for the class to read and critique? You happen to have used one of the student papers. Well, that particular student may have done a fine job in his or her research, but a student is hardly an expert in the field. Oh, I hadn't realized that it was a student's work. I just noticed that it was on the website of a professor and thought, well, that it would be his work. Mm, you really need to investigate a bit deeper before you use online material. You could have checked the sources that the student had used. There might have been some useful papers by experts in that student's reference page. Okay. Now, the study here that you've cited looks very good. But did you notice that the person who did the study works for a laboratory that's funded by a major chocolate company? Oh, so it's biased. Well, perhaps. At least it should be taken with a grain of salt. But it might also be very good research. So with data like that, data which may be biased, you should try to find an independent person who's run the same kind of experiment. Remember that a good experiment should be, well, you should be able to replicate it. So if a major chocolate company comes out with a study, we should have other people looking at that research with a critical but open mind. So it might be a good source. I don't have to throw it out. Right. But I think you should try to find more studies to back up the results. Okay, so has that been helpful? Yes. Oh, yeah, very, Dr. Johnson. Thank you. I really appreciate your help. What a good teacher. Imagine everything the teachers saw in their report. Yes. So I think this is very easy. What do you think the, the correct answer is? Letter D. Letter D. She needs to pay attention more in the details. Have you heard that expression, read between lines? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. OK. 
Okay, let's do this one. Let's say, listen again to part of the conversation and ask, answer the question. Why does the professor say this? Now, the study here that you've cited looks very good. But did you notice that the person who did the study works for a laboratory that's funded by a major chocolate company? Oh, so it's biased. Well, perhaps. At least it should be taken with a grain of salt. Why does the professor say this? It should be taken with a grain of salt. So what do you think this is? Letter A, maybe. I think it's A, yes. Yes. To investigate the claims a little bit further. And that's true. You know, what, what the professor is explaining is this. It's like... um. Oh my God, look, I made a report about, about Nayib Bukele and he was a terrible person. And then the teacher says, okay, but you know who wrote this? Mauricio Funes did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, so that that's similar, you know, so you have to investigate who wrote this. That's why he said, you should ask an independent, not a biased. Right? Yes. So... Yes. So why did the professor say this? To encourage the student to investigate the claims further. So if if imagine I don't know history about El Salvador, but I, I, I in my homework, I had to do um, a report about Nayib Bukele. And I, man, I read that he's a terrible person. And in my report, and then my teacher comes, you know, that was a very good report, but did you know that the person that wrote this is his number one enemy? And I said, no, I didn't. Yeah, so every time when you read something good or bad, you have to see the source where it comes from. The source, okay? So what is the lecture mainly about? Let's listen to this one. So, now I'd like to focus on the Prairie School of Art. Okay, this listening is six minutes, so let's pay attention. It says, what is this lecture mainly about? Is it about the first skyscraper in America? Uh, everybody knows what a skyscraper is, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. In El Salvador, now, now we have many skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. If you go frequent, if you go recently to San Benito, and you see nice buildings now. Okay, so is this lecture mainly about the skyscrapers in America, the influence of the English arts, ABD craft environment movement? Do you know what craft is? No. No. Why is Suchitoto? No way. Son como they are like uh, something like. Mm, how can I say in why, Spanish? Why is Silobasco famous? Por los muñequitos de barro. Okay, that's handcraft. Handcraft, yeah. Okay, yeah, because it's something that, it's a craft made by hand. So it's something art artistic. Okay. So, right. one more, so one more time says, so. Is this about skyscrapers? Is this about the craft movement? Is this about the Prairie School of Architecture? Or is this about orient oriental motifs in American architecture? Wait, wait, wait.
Motif is a repeated pattern. An image, okay. A motif is a repeated pattern. An image, a symbol that comes back again and again. Do you do you understand that expression? No. Okay. Okay. Let me give you an example. Who is the biggest representative painter in El Salvador? Can you please repeat the question? I'm sorry. Who maybe is Fernando Yor? Maybe Fernando Yor, the, the 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 representative of painter in El Salvador. Sorry, I'm I'm not sure if it's my internet, but you are like breaking up. Let me check. Class, am I breaking up? And now we can hear you, but you were breaking up. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank you. The biggest yeah. representative is better now. Okay, the biggest representative of, of painting as the ballot is Fernando Yard. But um personally, I don't like him. Not him. I don't like his art because I feel it's a very big copy. I mean, it's not original because it, he he paints Picasso and he puts avocados and tomatoes to make it. You know, do you, have you seen Picasso's painting, The Cubism? No. Okay, Picasso paints very strange. He he can maybe make one face and one big eye and one small eye and then the nose. But bastantes líneas y, y, y figuras ovaladas and stuff like that. Which is exactly what Fernando York does. Entonces creo que ahí viene motives. It's a repeated pattern. The only thing that Fernando York le pone salvadoreño es que pone lo, los pueblitos, las piedritas, el canasto. <laughs> but then the rest is, he, he is a good painter. He is a very good painter. Y saben que yo, yo era bien amigo de la hija de él. Y cuando íbamos a la casa de él, yo me, quedé, me mordía la lengua por I said, I will shut up. I will shut up. So in my opinion, there are better artists in El Salvador. Okay, so let's listen to this lecture. So... Okay, let's go. Architecture which developed the most significant architectural style in North America in the first decades of the 20th century. The main influences on this style came from several places. For example, the philosophy and practice of the architect Louis Sullivan. Now, you may remember that Sullivan liked to say that form follows function. In other words, the shape and structure of a building should follow, should, should depend on the purpose, the intended use of the building. There was also the English arts and crafts movement. That was important around this time, too. That was a second important influence. And I should mention traditional Oriental themes, which also played an important part in the Prairie School ideas. Now, the students and followers of Sullivan the most famous of whom was Frank Lloyd Wright, developed these themes and ideas into a truly American style, a style expressing a belief in the unity of mankind and nature. Now, when people think of architecture, they, they often think of large public buildings. But most of the effort of the Prairie School was devoted to domestic buildings, mainly houses for well-to-do private citizens. So, can anyone here describe to me any of the important features of prairie school houses? 
Didn't they mostly have long horizontal lines rather than a vertical appearance? Yes, yes, they did. That's certainly part of it. We can say that the most visible external features of this architecture were horizontal lines and heavy roofs projecting away from the walls. The shapes were designed to both harmonize with and reflect the broad, flat prairies of the Midwestern United States. But somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas, especially in the Chicago suburbs, rather than on the prairies themselves. Okay, now, what about the insides, the interiors? Didn't they want to do away with small rooms? Well, in a sense, yes. Um, there was certainly an emphasis on keeping the number of separate rooms to a minimum, um, opening up living space, and uh, designing internal walls so that the light and view created a sense of unity. The idea was to reduce the number of interior corners typical of traditional European houses. See, prairie school architects thought of this of this traditional home as confining, both physically and, and also spiritually. So, by ridding the inside of houses of, of so many rooms and corners and walls, they hoped to create a feeling of, of movement and freedom. Their ideal of beauty was to try to make the living space more compatible with human proportions and living requirements. Often, large fireplaces were built at the center of the overall design rather than attached to an outside wall. And this gave additional structural support to the building, so it further allowed the building to get by with fewer interior walls. Now, let me add that in line with their belief in the importance of nature, these architects related the interiors to the surrounding natural landscape by their use of windows that were continuous ribbons of glass. So, in that way, the outside and inside of the houses were more closely related. Other ways they suggested the importance of nature were in designing terraces projecting from the external walls with parapets, walls that were used as, as planting boxes for flowers and shrubs, and deep roof overhangs that led the eye toward the horizon. Of course, not all prairie school houses had all these features, but certainly we can say that there was a general tendency among these architects to provide their designs with many of them. Okay, so now we've discussed overall structure. Now what about ornamentation? Uh, didn't they reject almost all decorative elements? Well, not entirely. Although it's true they like to keep things simple. Again, this was in line with their opposition to what they perceived as, as the fussiness of more traditional housing styles. We can say that ornamentation was only permitted if it, if it complemented, if it, if it blended in with the overall expression and feeling of the building. So, to this end, the prairie school architects tended to use simple, unmixed, natural materials sometimes with geometric or oriental designs. For example, many of the prairie houses had a turned-up roof edge, reminiscent of traditional Japanese houses. Okay, so finally, I'd like to mention that these architects usually designed all the furniture that went with each house. Each piece of furniture, whether built-in or freestanding, was carefully crafted to fit in with the overall feeling of the house. Again, natural materials were preferred and restful horizontal lines were emphasized. Now so what do you think it, it is, A or B, C or D? That is a teacher. She's talking about the Prairie School of Architecture. Yeah, I am I am stuck between B and C. <laughs> Obviously, she talk about the, the influence. Uh, influence of the English arts, and she talk about the Oriental motif, and she talk about the first uh, building in America, but the 
the talking was about the priority school. Yeah. Okay, so listen, number nine, look at number nine. What can be said about the nature of prairie school architecture? A, B, A, C, B, D, B, C. Let's see. A, B, and C, the influence of the English arts and the Oriental Mosque. And uh, B, and D? I think B, and D. Yeah. Definitely it's not C <laughs> or A. So it has to be B and D. Okay. And according to the professor, how did the Prairie School architects, architects make living space more compatible with human needs? They use... Is that another reference because... Uh, they talk about the, the the uses of the building that uh, there are no indication. I think we need to guess in that because yeah, we have because I remember she said that they they made they made the furniture according to the, the yes house. yes uh, they they think about all of the details, even the furniture. And all of the detail about the building, and there are no information about that in the previous. Yes, there's no information about this. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's do this one. The shapes were designed to both harmonize with and reflect the broad, flat, prairies of the Midwestern United States. But somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas, especially in the Chicago suburbs, rather than on the prairies themselves. Why does the professor say this? Somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas. So why does you say that ironic part? B, because it's not privately, it's urban areas. Exactly. Then, yes. It's... <clears throat> it has to be B. Yeah, good. All right. And let's do the last reading. I think it's letter B because the tendency of a meme is. Oh, to I'd like to present an idea that is recent. Oh man, you know what? Did you did you do this by yourself? I I, I, I yeah, didn't, but I think it's D because. By what about it, thirteen? Thirteen is number C. What number, you keep it number C. I'm sorry, letter C. <laughs> ah, letter C. Let's see the answers. We got them all right. All right, we got them all right, although I'm not happy with some answers. Yes. <laughs> and what about the, the midterm with the questions that I told you? Yes. Um, I promise we'll do that on Monday. We'll uh, do that on Monday. Don't because... you have to, to present uh, our race? No, no, no. Yeah, don't worry about that. You know, I always tell my students, don't worry about about uh i mean the most important thing is that you know we're doing this correctly that we're listening we're going step by step sometimes if we take longer we will take longer but you know i don't want to rush you oh okay okay don't worry and, and they know me about that i don't like to, uh, i don't want to rush you like no no we have to be here so let's hurry let's hurry no ahí pierden ustedes <laughs> okay yeah don't worry about it but i promise we'll do that on monday okay thank you very much I will say goodbye okay. because this is going to disconnect soon. <laughs> Have okay. a very good bye. weekend. I'll see you Monday. See you. Thank bye. you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.